Hola, buenos días a todos y a todas y bienvenidos a este webinario. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this webinar for the Culture Moves Europe call. We're back with these new calls uh, from uh, Creative Europe after the summer. We hope that you've had a great summer. On our side, we are here full of energy again, and we can't wait to explain all these new Creative Europe calls. We are meeting here today to introduce the Culture Moves Europe call. As probably some of you know, this call has two different funding lines. One line, which is the one we're dealing with today, for artists and culture professionals. And there's another funding line for artistic residencies. Today, we're going to focus on that first um, line, which is the call that is open at the moment. As you probably know, um, it was opened uh, in August and it's going to be open until no November 30. We always uh, recommend that you don't wait until the very last minute to send your application. So the sooner the better. Culture Moves Europe, as I said, is a funding line from Creative Europe. And before we begin introducing our panelists for today, I want to give you some technical information, which is today we have simultaneous interpreting from English into Spanish, because one of the panelists will speak, be speaking in English. So if you need that translation service, uh, you can use it. And also we know that some of you are watching, are joining this webinar from outside of Spain. So if you need interpreting as well, you can do it. I'll explain how you have to set that. You have your controls at the bottom of the screen. You see a world globe. If you click uh, there, you can choose the language you can listen to. You can just leave it in the main audio or you can choose English or Spanish according to your preference. Now I will introduce today's panelists. We have uh, a lot of people with us here today. First, I'll introduce Mar Borchata Slendak uh, Gosha for, uh, for her friends. She's uh, the head for projects uh, in uh, culture and education in the European Commission, and she coordinates this call. Gosha, once again, we want to thank you for being here with us today and uh, we will be glad to hear you talk about the general aspects of the call. Then we also have Maria Dolores Mesegue, Loli. Uh, in this case, uh, she coordinates uh, this grant from the Goethe Institute. As you know, this is the institution that manages and implements this call. And Loli will tell us about all the details about how to apply for the for the funds. And it's going to be very useful practical information. And then after that, we have two practical cases, two people that have been beneficiaries of uh, these funds. And they are going to share their experience with us. We have Ana Españolo, designer and art producer, and Alba Royo, uh, fashion designer. We want to uh, thank them for being here today. And finally, uh, we have uh, the person from the Europe, Europe, Creative Europe office, Carolina Fenol, who will tell us about the most technical aspects and she will be managing the Q&A session. I want to thank her for her work during these previous days to organize this webinar. I will explain how this session is going to work. First, Gosha will provide the general framework about Culture Moves Europe. Then Loli will explain the call itself. We'll go into further details. And then we will have those two case studies with the two panelists that will explain their experience with uh, this program. This will be up to 11.30 and from there, we will open the floor for our Q&A session. We ask you to please share your questions in the Q&A section. And we will leave the chat for 
technical aspects or issues and, and to communicate with each other. Carolina and I will be in charge of those questions that you will be able to address to the panelists. And at the end of the session, we will send a, an assessment form and it, please, if you can provide your your answers for, for to get that feedback because it's really helpful for us to organize the upcoming sessions. I also want to tell you that this session is being recorded and you will be able to receive or to see this video in the YouTube channel, also from our website. And as well, you will have all the presentations on our website. I think that that's all on my side. If you want, we can begin with the presentations. I'm sure that this is what going what's going to be really useful for you and interesting. So Gosha, go ahead, I, I give you the floor. Hello, everybody. Uh, many thanks to Monica for this introduction. Uh, I'm always pleased to see you uh, responding so massively in the French, uh, the, in the um, in the Spanish desk uh, webinars. Um, I know that many of you haven't heard about uh, Culture Moves Europe yet. This is a new scheme. Uh, this is an action that it's it's a part of uh, the Creative Europe program, so it's an EU funded program. We are in the third year, so I would say it's our latest uh, addition to the program. We started only in 2022 at the at the very end of the year. So um, we had three, three years uh, long experience now. And uh, we are trying to develop all the time to adjust to what is needed to, to see what which, which kind of features should be developed further, etc. I will speak a little bit more about this, but I will just give you a general context of what is Cultural Moves Europe, what is not, and uh, where you can situate it politically. So uh, we started the scheme because there was a need from the sector, from the artists. Everybody uh, wanted to have the kind of mobility for artists so that they can also travel like the students, like uh, uh, professionals from other uh, sectors. And we put this in place and trying to make it simple, uh, to make it quite uh, reasonably heavy, uh, not bureaucratic uh, to make it easy to understand uh, the uh, rapid financing, etc. Uh, the scheme is implemented by the Goethe Institute in Brussels, but this is the fully funded uh, European project, and uh, this is why the Commission is in charge of it as well. So, um, Culture Moves Europe is a mobility scheme which means that we are giving money, we are offering grants to go on mobility projects. So uh, it's a contribution from our side. We'd like to help you realize your project. Uh, but uh, in some cases, of course, it may mean that uh, the, the grant we are offering is not enough. Then you are invited to top up with other uh, sources of financing. Uh, it's absolutely compatible and legal. You can do it. You can search for local, regional, or private sponsor uh, support. This is perfectly fine if needed. For some projects you will not need, you will discover that uh, depending on the destination, depending on the duration and the nature of, of your projects, it might be that it's enough. Um, also, um, although we believe uh, in fair remuneration of the artists, here in this scheme, we do not treat the subject at all. So you will see there's no money foreseen to pay your work. This is the mobility scheme. And even if we believe that every artist must be, must be uh, paid uh, for its work, it's not with this scheme. So this, I would like to make it clear uh, so that there is no uh, frustration or questions we are supporting you on mobility. But of course, if someone is interested, there's a lot being done. Now the commission is working with member states to increase, um, to, to better the working condition of the artists. There's a lot being done on a political level currently. As I said, uh, this is the third time we are meeting. This is the third call uh, for individual mobility and the third webinar, uh, webinar with the Spanish desk. And we are almost at the end. So far, out of 6,000 uh, individual, mo individual mobility grants, we have already selected 4,500, more or less. Uh, so we will 
still select 1,600 artists in four months' time. So uh, please, again, we will insist on this because uh, here, this time, the order, it lasts only four months. So it ends in November. Again, do not wait till the last moment. In the last month, it's always the competition. It's harder and harder. So if you have your project in mind, apply as soon as possible. Um, coming back to uh, what happens, uh, we will finish in 2025. All the projects will be closed. And what happened next? Of course, uh, our decision is to, um, our um, intention is to continue the scheme. We will continue for the next years, uh, 25, 28. Uh, we are currently working on the new edition. What can I say? Uh, that in any case, we'll continue both actions, individual mobility and the residency scheme. Uh, and there we do not foresee any revolution. It will um, evolve based on the feedback. And this is why I insist on the feedback we received from you, because the scheme is made for you and based on expectations, based on a feedback we receive from the artists and cultural professionals. So whenever you have some ideas to share with us, you think that something should be changed or something works well, please do share with us. We are quite open. You can share it with the commission, with the desks, uh, with Gata Institute, uh, whoever is easier for you to contact. Please share with us your, your feedback. Also for um, unsuccessful applicants. I think it's also crucial for us to understand and be able to help you, to guide you. Also concerning unsuccess unsuccessful applicants, I can tell you that uh, we see that applicants tend to reapply if they were not successful and they present far better projects. So do not uh, lose uh, your enthusiasm. Please rework on your project if you were not successful and reapply whenever there's a new call. Then your ch chances are really higher based on our experience. Uh, well, I know that many of you are not familiar with uh, the scheme, so I would like to, to ask you already now, maybe if you can uh, do it even during this webinar, please check our social media and follow us, because this is where you will find most of the information, up-to-date information. We are on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on X, and uh, you can find uh, very, very relevant information and uh, up to date. I can give you some example. We will have uh, every Friday, there is an info session, there is a webinar, you can uh, register and all the information will be there. You will find also information about upcoming trainings. For example, we have very soon a training on how to make your mobility project more sustainable, which may be very interesting for you to prepare your application also, because there is a, there are points for, for this part, for sustainability of your project. So check out, there are already some dates announced for the very upcoming weeks. And also you will have links to uh, re recordings of previous webinars and tutorial videos to explain some uh, aspects of the scheme. Loli will uh, explain it in detail. And the last two points, uh, you see that everything is happening in English in Culture Moves Europe, but of course, uh, we do value all the languages. This is just purely for practical reason. It's because we have international team of experts evaluating your projects and uh, because you want to treat your applications rapidly and not spend money on translation. But you, as an applicant, you are more, more than welcome to use um, translation tools, online translation tools. It's very fine. We encourage you to do so if you feel uh, much at much more at ease with uh, your uh, mother tongue. Don't. Uh, there's not. It's not a problem for us. Um, if you use artificial intelligence, pre please read again what is written. Uh, we see sometimes projects, it's not the best advisor. Better ask someone, please read my application, read if it makes sense, if someone who does not know my pro project will understand. It would be much more efficient than artificial intelligence supported project. And make your project personal. Explain us why this destination, why this partner, why you would like to work on this subject. More you tell about, more 
it will speak to the um to the jury to the to the experts who will evaluate and well um i can only tell you that i'm staying with you uh if you have any questions if you want to discuss any subjects with us i will be there and uh, good luck with the application and i will give the floor back to monica thank you Muchísimas gracias, Gosia, por tu presentación. Y si os parece... Thank you very much, Gosia, for your presentation. And now I give the floor to Loli so she can tell us more about this. Hello, thank you very much, uh, Monica. I'm Loli. I coordinate grants in the Goethe Institute. I'm going to tell you uh, for about an hour all these details. So be comfortable. I'm going to share a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, and then I will also share a little bit about how is the experience to, to apply for the funds. Okay, the slides are in English, but I'm going to speak in Spanish. And we also have a translation. We have Maria translating. As Monica and Gosha said, Culture Moves Europe is a project for promoting artistic and cultural mobility across the 40 creative Europe countries. And it supports individual mobility and residency projects. These grants uh, contribute to travel and subsistence costs, and it also offers additional top-ups depending on each individual situation. We also have specific measures to promote sustainable practices, diversity, and also to ensure gender, geographical, and sectoral balance. So it's not always the same countries, the same sectors receiving the funds. We also focus especially on emerging artists and also uh, applicants with a disability. The project, the program is funded by the European Union and it's implemented by the Goethe Institute. As Monica explained, we have two different funding lines. We have the individual mobility action, which is the one we we're going to focus on today, and the residency action. Right now, the call is not open. So in this case, this one is for legal entities who want to host uh, a residency with artists in their institution. And the individual mobility action is for the artists themselves. It's the artists who send the application to travel to another country to implement their personal project. The call for individual mobility is for artists and cultural professionals. They need to be active in at least one of the eligible sectors. I will explain which ones these are. They need to be uh, legal residents in a creative Europe country. Uh, if they want to carry out a mobility project in another country, they can send their application individually or as part of a group. And the applicant need to have, needs to have an international partner based in a different Creative Europe country. So that's the golden rule. One destination, one project, one partner, one international collaborator. What are the sectors? Uh, what are the criteria? Uh, the sectors are architecture, cultural heritage, design and fashion design, literature for fiction works, music, performing arts, and visual arts. The audiovisual sector is not included uh, in the eligible sectors for Culture Moves Europe. The list of Creative Europe countries this is all the European Union countries included their uh, overseas uh, countries and outermost regions. 
for example, in Spain, the Canary Islands, and other um, countries uh, like Albania, Tunisia, Ukraine, those are countries that have an agreement for, with the European Union to be a part uh, of um, Culture Month with Europe. The call that is open right now is from August 1st. It was open in August 1st and it will remain open until November 30. We have monthly deadlines, which is like periodical deadlines. That means that every month we have all the applications that we've received and they will be assessed by the uh, uh, experts. And I will explain you how this works. But as Gosha said, even if the call is open until November 30, we highly recommend you to send your application as soon as possible. Because the last few days we received many applications. So it's it's more difficult to be to be selected to. This is a monthly timeline. It's the timeline we use here in Goethe Institute, and we think it's useful to share it with you so you can understand how the deadlines work and why we have those deadlines, because there's a whole process uh, underlying. And it, that's why we have all these monthly deadlines. We receive applications during the whole month until the last day of the month. In this case, for example, if you send your application tomorrow or before the end of September, your monthly deadline would be would be September 30. So all the applications that we've received up to that date will be assessed by the experts. In this case, we have three different assessment stages. First, we check uh, eligibility. Uh, we, we did that in our team. We basically check that the eligibility criteria uh, are all correct, uh, that you are of legal age, that you live in an eligible country. For example, if you send an application and then we see you're a resident in the U United States, we see that you're not eligible. So in the first assessment stage, it will already be discarded, okay? But then we have all the eligible applications that they move to a second assessment stage. Then we have our experts, uh, for example, architecture. Well, we have a group of architecture experts that will assess those applications. Then those experts grade the application and then we have a board for the third stage integrated by uh, members of the European Commission and the Goethe Institute, and they assign, depending on the budget available, they identify the final applicants that will be beneficiaries of the grant. So this takes a whole month and a half of the whole process, a month and a half after the monthly deadline. So if you send the application on, sept on September 10, you your monthly deadline is September 30, then you need to think that you're going to need a month and a half. So that will be middle October, the end of October. And that's when we are going to send you the results. We uh, communicate the applicants, uh, whether they've been selected or not. So you need to maybe eight weeks, depending on if there are holidays and that delays the process as well. So you that you need to know all that to to, well, to 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 know when you can expect to receive results. So it's a month and a half after the monthly deadline, not after the date when you've sent the application, because sometimes the applicants are concerned that maybe uh, their application is not being processed or no. It's a month and a half after the monthly time the monthly deadline. Once the artist has been notified. Our team prepares an agreement, a grant agreement, depending on the different options that they've chosen. And the agreements will be sent to the beneficiaries. That can also take 
three months, three weeks, sorry, or up to a month because you are many people. So we always tell you that an artistic project, a mobility project, can never start before then 60 days after your monthly deadline okay so if your monthly deadline is september 30 you need to think that you need 60 days before you can start the project so that will be november 30 for example that would be when you could think of uh, launch or start with your project and if you send application in october uh, 3 october 3rd for example then you don't get to the September monthly deadline. So that's why from our team, we always recommend that you send the application at least four months before you want to begin your project. I spent a lot of time explaining this, uh, this slide, because I think it's the most important information, basically. Then the eligibility criteria. There are three key aspects, the applicant, the international partner, and the mobility project. The eligibility criteria for the applicants, they need to be of legal age. They need to be active in at least one of the eligible sectors, the ones that I mentioned before. They need to have their legal residence in a creative Europe country. We also saw the list. But this is all this information is available in the call, uh, the call document, in the website. So if you if you miss some information, you can access all this data. Okay, it's in our in our social media and in the text of in the call document. And also, if you sent an application in a previous call and you were rejected, you can send an application again for this third call. But if you have already been a beneficiary of uh, Culture Moves Europe for individual mobility, you cannot send a new application because we have to give opportunities to new artists and culture professionals so everybody can access to these grants. There is no minimum experience that we require Actually, uh, this grant, uh, we, we really we highly recommend it for people who are beginning to work in the sector because this will make it possible for you to get more experience. You just need to be of legal age. There is no limit either for the kind of professionals. You can be a painter, a photographer, a dancer, a writer just anything you just need to be active in one of the uh, eligible sectors but there is no limitation to the kind of artist you get to be it can also be producers managers this is profile which normally we don't associate to culture because they are not directly related to the creation process, but they are also cultural professionals working in the cultural sector. So um, they can also, they, they are also eligible. And you can combine the Culture Moves Europe grant with other uh, funding lines, so long as it's not a European Union financial support to uh, contribute to travel daily expenses. If that's the case, then you cannot combine it. But if it is anything else, if it's, for example, I don't know, any other kind of grant, a, a local uh, grant from your region or anything else not funded by the European Union, then you can combine both. Then it is also important to focus on group projects, which are a little different. You can send an application for up to five artists collaborating in the same group. It doesn't need to be artists uh, living in the same country or with the same nationality or with experience working together. You just need 
five artists who want to collaborate together on the same project. It can be their first project. And this is the perfect grant, actually, for this uh, project. And as I've said, they can come from different countries as long as um, they are coming from the different countries. I mean, we have a Spanish one, a French one, and another one from Ukraine or Finland. So they all need to go to a country which is none of theirs. I don't know, Austria, for example. But if, for example, we go to one of the countries that one of the person, one of the, one of the people is coming from, then it won't won't be an, an eligible project. So you need to understand that. So one of the members in the group, the leader of the group, for example, is the person in charge of sending the application on behalf of the other, the, the, the rest of the members of the a group and if that person is uh, selected as a beneficiary that group leader will be the person receiving the grant and will have to distribute it among the other members and will be the contact person with the uh, in all the communications with culture moves europe it's important that all the members of the group spend the same days in the destination country. It cannot be that if the project begins on October 1st until October 10, for example, one member of the group arrives on the 2nd, another one leaves on the 9th. No, they all need to spend the time, the same period of the project in the destination. And that's very important. For the international uh, collaborator or the international partner, there are different eligibility criteria. It can be an individual individual or an organization. It can be an artist that you already know or someone you've collaborated with or someone you've always wanted to collaborate with. And so this is a chance to do it. It can also be an organization. So it is open. It's really, there's there are no limitations for the artists. The artist, the applicant is the one who knows uh, what is the best international partner for them. Sometimes they, they they tell us, well, I cannot find a partner, but our answer is always the same. We don't know how your project is. We, we are not familiar with the way you create art. Only you can know what is the best possible partner for you. So we always uh, encourage you to do that search and try to find the best possible international partner for you. It, it needs to be, of course, based in a different creative Europe country, and it needs to be relevant for, to the purpose of the project. I don't know, if I want to implement a music project, I cannot go to, I don't know, find a partner which is a, an industrial factory. <laughs> I mean, um, you need to describe on the online form why this partner is the best possible one for your project. Okay, and from that international partner, you need, what do you need from them? You need a letter of invitation. This is for when you are sending the application. In that letter, that letter needs to include a description of the partner, what is that they do, in which way you are planning to collaborate together, during which dates and the dates they need to be the same ones that you include in the, the application form and also a signature and this is important i want to insist on this we receive many applications that are not eligible because the letter is not signed and that's a pity it's really a shame when that happens so pay attention to the call document. In the call document, you have a model of letter, uh, a letter of invitation that you can even copy if you want. So there are no mistakes. Uh, nothing. There's nothing wrong in the letter. 
the duration of these mobility projects. It's to between seven to 40 days for individuals and seven to 14 days for groups. It has to be uninterrupted. This means that if you send an application for 40 days, it has to be 40 days in the destination without going to another place in between. You could lose the grant otherwise. The trip needs to be a round trip between the place of residence and the place of destination. Many artists tell us, well, but I have another project. Can I go from there to my next destination? For But unfortunately, we always have to say no, because the grant is for a round trip. trip. So if you're not going back to your uh, to your home country, you may lose the grant. And it has to be just one destination. We cannot have uh, three different countries, for example. It has to be a single destination. When you send your application, you're going to see that you need to choose two objectives explore, create, learn, or connect. You have to choose two among these objectives. These are the main objectives. You have to explain why these are the main objectives of your projects. We know that some projects have many, many different objectives, but we you always need to choose between these four. You need to choose two and explain why these are the main objectives. Uh, also, so you can have an idea of how we uh, select the projects. There are two different duration categories. There are short-term projects from 7 to 14 days, also talking about individual mobility actions. Uh, we will choose around 60 to 70% of these projects. Then medium-term projects, we will choose 20 to 30 percent and then in long-term projects we choose usually a little less than that from 7 to 15 percent so if your project is a short-term project you have a bigger chance to to be a beneficiary also in the application form, I mean, the and in the call document, we explain how the evaluation is carried out by our experts. These are the questions that the experts need to answer and the questions that they use to grade your projects. The relevance of the project, the relevance of the mobility. Is it a project where we really need to travel, or is it a project that you could do in your home con in in the same country? The preparation, if it's a project that is well planned, um, if uh, the artist has talked to the to the the partner, or if it's a project because sometimes uh, we receive applications where the project is not really prepared. So for the expert. Uh, they will see that it's not such a serious project. So the, the better planned it is, the better. Then the outcome. You don't need to assure, to guarantee that your project is going to have amazing long-term outcomes. But I always say that this question has to do with convincing the expert why you think that your project is going to have good results, good outcomes in the, in the long term. And then sustainability. We just want for applicants to think about how a project can include some sustainability elements. If you can use recycle materials or if you can recycle the materials used or how they can adopt this sustainability criteria to, to the trip itself, eating local food or it's just to raise awareness so the applicants will think about how their projects can be more sustainable. 
And then, about the trip, the departure needs to be from the place of legal residence. You have 15 days. It doesn't mean that you need to use those 15 days to get to your destination, but we offer that flexibility, especially for groups or for trips in sustainable uh, means of transportation. So we offer that flexibility so that everybody can arrive to the destination on the same date. Then we pay uh, the grant according to the days that you are going to stay in the destination. And also for the return, it's the same thing. They All the members of the group, if it's a group, they need to leave on the same date and they have 15 days to arrive to their, uh, place of their place of legal residence. We will ask for documents, uh, documented evidence of uh, all these dates and that you are complying with all the eligibility criteria. And the last day to arrive home in this case would be April 30, 2025. We won't accept any projects that end, that finish after this date. This would be the last date when you can arrive home. Then information about the grant. There are different um, parts. We have a daily allowance, uh, which is 75 euros per day. Then we have a travel allowance, depending on the distance. If the travel distance is under 5,000 kilometers, it's uh, 350, and if it's more, it's 700 euros. Normally, for travels below 600 kilometers, we don't allow for plain travels. Then we have the additional top-ups, which depend on the applicant circumstances. For example, if you need a visa, you have a visa top-up, 80 uh, euros per person. We have also, if it's uh, for applicants from overseas countries and territories or outermost regions, uh, it's higher. It's a 150 top-up. Then a family top up of up to 100 euros. It doesn't matter if you have one one child or three children. It's the same. It's a fixed amount. Okay. And then for green mobility, uh, we have a, uh, a top up of 350 only for journeys from 600 kilometers or more. Then we have uh, also accessibility support if they need additional support, they can ask, they can apply for this top up. In this case, it's something that it's negotiated with the Culture Moves Europe uh, team, depending on the needs of the of each applicant. Then there's also an exception. You can send an applica, an application for virtual projects. This to be for applicants who want to travel to countries where there is a, a threat to, to the applicant's safety and security. So in this case, they need to apply for a virtual project. If it's for people who live or have their residence in a, in a country where there is this risk, as well, they can ask for, they can apply for a virtual project, but they can also apply for, for a, a normal project. In this case, we also have the uh, possibility for applicants with a disability to access, to apply for these virtual projects. And you can also uh, apply for the family top up. It is 35 euros per day in this case for virtual projects to contribute to um, daily expenses, connectivity, for example, or any other uh, expenses. In this case, we wouldn't have a travel allowance. Uh, so as I was saying, you can only apply for the family top up if applicable or also the accessibility top up. 
once you've uh, been selected as a grant beneficiary, you've signed your agreement, you received 75% of the mobility grant, including the accessibility support, if applicable. You may receive these up to 30 days after signing the grant agreement. And once the project has been implemented, you're, you're back home, you've sent the, the report about the project. Uh, our team has revised, uh, has checked the report. Then, only then, you will receive the rest of the grant, the, uh, the other 25% and all the additional top-ups that you had applied for. This report is nothing that you have to do during the project. It's just an online form, very similar to the application form, where you have some questions. You have to tell us how the project uh, worked, how was the collaboration with the uh, host institution if you achieved all the objectives you had and then also another part where you have to send all the uh, evidence uh, transportation tickets uh, anything to prove the, the mobility also uh, a document from the host institution explaining that everything went according to what was planned uh, and also pictures please send us cool pictures we 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 that's our favorite part we we love receiving those pictures and seeing those amazing projects uh, because we are here doing all the administrative work so so please take cool pictures so you can send them to us uh, as part of your report and the last day to send to your Report is in May 2025. How can you send, uh, how can you apply for the grant? First, register in the Create a Gap account. We get the application portal. You have to register as an individual, even for group projects. Then you have to select the Culture Moves Europe funding section, which is our goal. And you have to fill in all the documents in English. This is just a practical matter. Our experts work in English and everything needs to be in English. The only thing that can be in your mother tongue uh, is your ID <laughs> and the proof of your legal residence. Those are the documents that we accept in any language. Any other documents need to be in English. We are also asked about how you can send a successful application. We, we don't know what to say because uh, we don't know how the project is, but we can give you some pieces of advice. The first one is read the call document carefully. I know that sometimes you feel lazy about it because it's long, it's really, but there are many things. So it's it's very important you're asking for uh, European Union funds. So you need to read everything and know very well what you um, are, are doing, that you comply with the eligibility criteria. Then also make sure that you have all the documents you need, uh, that you are explaining everything and that you focus in the, uh, the, the right topic, don't get lost in, ex in all the explanations about the project. And also remember that the short-term projects have more chances of being selected. And it's very useful if you give your application document to someone else, to an, a fellow artist, a, a friend, a colleague, so they can read and tell you if it's easily understandable. That will be all on my side uh, with this PowerPoint. Now I'm going to share how the application process is, but I encourage you to follow us on our social media we have a great communication team it's very visual very user friendly so you can understand everything also if you have other questions we have our website and we have 
Also, our sessions every Friday at 11, where our team can answer any questions you may have. And um, in this case, we are ha having this webinar hosted by the Creative Europe office. But if you live in another country, you can also contact your Creative Europe uh, uh, desk uh, at your home country. And if not, here you have our email where you can send us all your questions. And now I am going to show you how, what you would see if you are trying to apply for the grants. Can you tell me that you can see my screen well? Muy bien, perfecto. Okay. Well, then, when you create your GAP account, this is what you can see. I have some additional features here because I'm a manager in the platform, but, well, you will have your tasks and your mails. And you have my applications and new applications. So in this case, you would click on Culture Moves Europe. And here on third call for mobility, individual mobility. I've already initiated one. So I go to my applications and I'm going to edit this one because I already filled all the information in to go faster. But this would be the, the application. Here you need to click on all the criteria, confirming that you are over 18 years old, that you live in one of the Creative Europe countries, that you haven't received, that you haven't been beneficiaries of Culture of Europe, Most Europe grants. So you click on all these options. Of course, you need to read the whole text. I'm not going to read it today because we'll spend the whole morning here, but you need to read everything, okay? Then you save that, you go to the next tab, and you have all your personal information here, birth date, nationality, which can be different from the country where you live. For example, I'm Spanish, but I live in Belgium, right? So I, it, this means that if I wanted, I could apply I could go to Spain because I'm Spanish, but since I my legal residence is Belgium, I could choose Spain as my destination. Well, no, me. I couldn't because I work for Cat Institute, but if, if this was, was your case, you could do it. Okay. And then also here, if you're an artist or a cultural professional with a disability, you can click on yes, and then you will have to answer here about the additional support that you may need, okay? And you get more options depending on, on what you answer. Here, and this is very important, here is where you decide if you are sending an individual application or a group application. So if you're a group, you click here, and here you can click to add new members for the group. This is very important. Sometimes we receive, or there, there are some people who tell us that they have to send uh, separate applications. And it's very important that you don't do this because if we receive two applications for the same project with the same text, they will both be discarded because you cannot send two uh, different applications for one same project. So if you want the application to be for a group, you need to send one single application, okay? And here you would add all the members. Here I'm going to continue as an individual. And this is more for our statistics. Uh, well, your uh, level of studies, the languages you speak, um, you can add all that. And then professional experience. Here is where you explain whether you're an emerging artist or 
that you already established, also more information for our statistics about the profile of the applicants. If you are a full-time employed artist, if you temporary, if you are retired, here you choose whether you're an artist or a cultural professional. So this is all for our statistics again. Here, this is about your international partner, an institution or collaborator that you're going to work with an individual or an organization. In any case, you need to provide all the information about the entity that you're going to work for in the uh, destination country. It's important that the international partner is in the destination country. Many times we receive applications of people who uh, are moving from one country to another one, but then the collaborator is uh, from a random country. And, and no, you need for the international partner to be based in the destination country. Then the details for the mobility stay, you need to read all the text. They are highlighted in orange, so you read all the information, please read everything because we just did the eligibility uh, check and we find many applicants who don't read the information because we receive many beautiful, wonderful applications and they haven't read the information and they are discarded. So it's a pity. So read what is the, 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 the day when you are supposed to travel. In this case, for example, in the form, we have uh, the support. If you set September 25, you already get an alert saying that it's too early or whatever. But please uh, read all the information. And then destination country. Here, people, are, we don't know why, sometimes they, they set their residence country. This is not a reason why we would discard an application, but it it it's wrong for our statistics. So it's important that you set the destination country here. Then here, a summary of all the information. And we arrive where you need to provide information about whether you want to request a virtual mobility. No, in this case, or if we need the visa top up or the uh, um, overseas uh, countries uh, top up. Also, if we need the family top up. Well, here I said yes, but. Then they ask you for the age of your children. And well, then we get to another section where we find many mistakes in the applications. We have a distance calculator here. It's automatic. So sometimes here, it's empty, right? These boxes are empty. And it's because I don't remember what I had said, but for example, if we type the address here, we have to wait until we get the options. We cannot just move to the next uh, box and just leave. It was not saved, so you have to wait until you get the options and you click on one of the options you get and then i wait and that's it and now i do have the distance it's already calculated we've also discarded some applications because of this we ask for our revision we ask the applicant please include the place the the origin and destination of your country, and they think they have, but they, they really haven't changed it. So pay, pay attention to this section. And then also here, how you are planning to arrive to the destination. If you ask, if you apply for the sustainability top up, you need to uh, choose a transportation that is, that is not uh, a flight, a plane. 
So you see the total here, but then this is an approximation. It's a because our team will revise that you can choose all the options because I don't know, maybe um, if you're going from Madrid to Paris, maybe you are the uh, OCT or top up, but you couldn't apply for it. So, well, we will check all these and maybe the amount uh, may vary to what's specified in the agreement. Normally, it's not the case, but it, it can happen. And here, your project, you talk about your sector, literature, on literature translation, uh, publishing and promotion of literary works. You can also choose a secondary sector. Here is where you choose the objectives. For example, I, I, well, I just typed and whatever here, different questions. And here, other information. If you've already participated in the iPortunas uh, project, if you've sent a, a previous application, but you were not selected. And then to avoid uh, cases of double funding, we ask you to click on these two sentences where you confirm that you're not receiving all the European Union funding for the same project for the travel allowances. I also want to mention something here, uh, tax. We are asked about these quite often. We always say that uh, the tax regulations are national, so you need to uh, ask about that in your local, in your country, in your region. Usually it's a small amount. You don't have to declare it, but we always uh, recommend you to ask about that to your, with your tax authorities. You need to send all your documents in a PDF format, the system would not recognize any other format, documents that are not expired. For example, we, we send, we receive a lot of applications with national identification documents that are expired, so we, we cannot take that. Also, for the proof of legal residence, we need to see your name and the address very clearly. There are three places where you can see the address when you create uh, the accounting gap in the proof of legal residence document and in the distance calculator. These are the three places where you see the address and they need to be the same address in these three places, okay? So pay attention to that. You need to update that address. Then we have another section for documents where you send your uh, resume. The resume is something and the portfolio is a different one. Um, in the resume, you have your professional experience, your education, uh, and in the portfolio, what we need is a selection of works of pieces, pieces of work or art that you've created before. So it's more like, well, show what, what, what you can do, what you've been doing, and so we can have an idea of how your work is. Because sometimes we receive two resumes and that's not what we need. Then the proof of collaboration with your international partner, the letter, the invitation letter. You have a model in the uh, call document. Please look at that, explain that very well to your partner, how the invitation letter needs to be. Then we save all that. We have a declaration of honor, the same. I, uh, 
I am over 18 years old. I confirm that I live in one of these countries. All these, you need to click on all these. Read it. Okay, just in case you're not eligible because of one of those things. Then also the data protection. And your feedback just uh, for our statistics, uh, if you can tell us how you uh, got to know about our program and if the application process was easy, difficult, if it was long or whatever. And also if you're using artificial intelligence tools to, to fill in the your form, it is allowed, but we need to uh, to know for our statistics. And as Gosha said, please read it, check it. We receive uh, many applications and we read whatever, and then we, 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 read, we read made by chat GPT. So please, uh, we want uh, individual personal application texts, but you can use these tools, of course, to help you with the, with the language, basically. And that will be all. If you have any final remarks for us, if you want to tell us how cool we are, uh, you send the application and that's it. That will be it. That is the application process. I hope that it was clear that it wasn't too boring uh, listening to me. And in any case, we will have the uh, questions and answers in the end. I give the floor back to Monica. Sorry, sorry about that. I was thanking Loli for this uh, explanation. Everything was very clear about the application process. And now we're going to give the floor to two artists who have been beneficiaries of these uh, grants. We can begin with Ana Españolo, so she can tell us about her experience. Ana, I give you the floor. Great. Well, thank you very much, Monica, for your presentation. As you were saying, my name is Ana. More than an artist, I'm an art producer. And that's uh, why I'm I'm active in. And I also have my artistic creation, but 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 I want to keep working on this uh, artistic uh, art production um, work. And I applied uh, for this uh, program to go to Brussels to collaborate with uh, an architecture, art, and music festival uh, in the outskirts of Brussels. And I uh, filled in the application and I got the grant and I, I applied for the longest period that there was, uh, so I spent a long time in the place and the idea was to organize an open air exhibition with artists from all the world who came and it was a great and amazing experience i had never worked with so many people from all over the world i've been living in europe for uh, two years. I'm from Argentina. I'm, I'm a Spanish citizen, but but I'm originally from Argentina. And it was a really rich experience in that sense. And so you can understand a bit more about how I got to the association. Um, I had already been to Belgium once. And they organize this festival every summer where you not only have the exhibition, but you also have performances and music, and I loved it. So I started following the association, it's Horst Art and Music, it's their name. And I saw at some point that they were looking for producers to co-produce actions together. So I contacted them and I had an interview with them and from there, I started working with my project with Culture Mobs Europe to be able to uh, to to pay for my uh, mobility stay uh, in Belgium, and then I well I arranged everything with the organization. We 
we prepare the, the place, uh, the physical place. It's very interesting. It's like an industrial um, park. It was uh, a military base. Um, and the, the, the government uh, redesigned it for these uh, artistic and cultural actions. Um, they've had initiatives from many uh, collectivities. And, and the festival usually takes place in, in May. It's like the beginning of the summer. And we spend the whole month there working with all the installations from different artists. Uh, a total, if I'm not mistaken, a total of six installations and two performances. I helped a bit with uh, everything, but it was a very big team. And I was part of the co-production team. So it was like having uh, like a general regard of everything that needed to be done. So that's why I like of this grant is not only for artists, also for cultural cultural professionals. Um, I mean, what I did there was not a specific word of art. It, it was like 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 a, like a whole experience in in art production. And well, I don't know what else I can tell you. Um, I think it's a lot of information, too much information, but well, if you are interested in knowing what the organization does, I will leave the link uh, because it's it's really interesting. I stayed in touch with them and the idea is to keep collaborating with them uh, in the distance because I, 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 the experience was very good with the team and they always invite new curators, producers and uh, to work with them so it's uh it's like a huge hub uh, with a lot of things going on at the same time it's it was a really unique experience and if it hadn't been with this uh grant with this uh with the creative moves europe uh, grant uh, it wouldn't have been able for me to to go to to the country and spend that, that, that time there. And that, that would be all. It uh, was brief, but a lot of information. But th that was my experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna, for sharing your experience with all of us. And now I give the floor to Alba Arroyo so she can also tell us uh, about her experience. Alba. Hello. Good morning. Well, I'm Alba. I'm a fashion designer. I have a brand in Zaragoza. I will leave also the link and also the link to the brand uh, that I collaborated with. Just to give you some context, uh, I'll tell you how I met my European partner. I went to the Mondas Association they work here in Zaragoza with European projects and they manage Erasmus Plus projects. They invited me, but it was by chance, actually. Um, I had a project in that moment with several European partners and we had one last meeting in Zaragoza with the association. It was a project about uh, female entrepreneurship. And I went there to talk about my brand. And at the end of the meeting, one of the girls there told me that she thought it was very interesting what I was doing because my brand is uh, focused on sustainable uh, fashion. So, and I, uh, I've worked with uh, different um, charitable initiatives. I work with uh, uh, NGOs as well for people uh, in vulnerable situations. So she told me that they were working in another project with Martinica. They also had, they also work with uh, women uh, coming from prostitution and uh, in risk of uh, social exclusion. And they wanted to collaborate with me in different projects. So I said I would, I would be delighted to do that. So I went to Martinica. And that's the partner I chose for this cultural of Europe application. And I spent there 10 days with an Erasmus Plus uh, program. That's how I contacted the association. 
it was uh, great because I was able to see uh, personally how they work there. Um, and they, they had a quite unstable situation in that moment. Uh, but I offered to work as a, as a voluntary with them and help them. Uh, and after that, they contacted me personally and they wanted to find a way for me to go back to work with them again. Um, so it was then when I had the opportunity to apply for the Culture Moves Europe uh, call. Uh, we already had an idea when I was there. We wanted to create a collection to, to, work, to feel inspired by both worlds and create something together so we could reinforce that uh, collaboration. So I applied for Culture Moves Europe with my project, which was creating a collection with uh, fishing nets because uh, Martinica is in the Caribbean. So uh, fishing culture is uh, like in the center of everything there. And well, with this program, I was able to to do this mobility action. I could travel all the way there, which is not easy. It's true that the, the sustainability top up was not a, an option in this case because uh, well, the flights are very expensive. So I didn't cover all the all the or the cost of the of the travel, but it was a considerable support because it's very expensive otherwise traveling there. So everything worked out great. We were able to create the collection. We the association uh, provided all the materials and also their uh, their uh, facilities. And well, the father of the person who manages the tailor shop uh, is a fisherman, so he could also provide the materials. That was amazing, amazing. And it also made it possible for me to be in touch with all these women, which is the social aspect that I really like. They were uh, developing a training program. Uh, uh, and I, so I was able to be in touch with all those women as well. And that's why it was a very enriching experience for me. So um, sometimes we are an artistic sector that is a bit on the side, uh, fashion designing. So so I thought it was very cool that it was a category in the in the sectors for these uh, European uh, funds. So it was it was a great experience, uh, a cool experience to have. And as for the application process, I didn't think it was especially difficult because, well, it's uh, it was an idea that we had been thinking about for a long time. So the association had been already, well, we all had a very clear idea of what we wanted to do. So I also worked with, did it with them. They work in many European projects. So when I wrote the application, I sent them all the documents before I sent it. I also had the support from the association I told you about here in Zaragoza. Thanks to them, thanks to them, I was able to continue this collaboration. So they also um, helped me with that. And as Loli said, I also sent it to many colleagues, friends, artists who gave me feedback. And they told me, well, adjust these or that. Let's talk more about these sort of thing. Um, because since in my head, I had a lot, like the social aspect was one of my focuses. But they were telling me, well, you're working with cultural projects. And so we um, felt the need to focus on the cultural aspect because it's a mobility for cultural projects. But it's true that this uh, project also had a very important sustainability element and a social element. So probably uh, that helped in, in getting in getting chosen. So well, basically that will be that's all. That's what I can tell you about. If you have any questions, uh, I'm available. Uh, but well, I don't know, Monica. You tell me if you think that I'm leaving anything behind. But thank you very much, Alba for sharing your experience. And now, yes, um, 
the audience can ask you some questions. Thank you all for being here in this webinar. We are going to open the floor for the audience now. We have um, quite some questions in the Q&A section. If you want, Carolina, we can start asking those questions to each of the panelists. Yes, uh, so far the questions we have are for Loli and Gosha, but if participants you have questions for these last two speakers, for the beneficiaries, we can also do so now. We have questions about the application process, the selection criteria. It's true that Loli mm, said at the beginning that each applicant is the one who knows um, the project's uh, needs and expectations for the project. But well, I don't know if you want to make any other comments because you have some matchmaking sessions, but I think that those are only for the residency action. I don't know if you want to. Well, if there's a specific question, you can tell me, but that's what I've been saying. Each applicant knows about his or her project. They are the ones who can know who's the best partner for them. In this case, we sometimes uh, recommend the trans, trans, trans artists and on the move associations, which can give you some ideas, but well, well, we don't provide a list of partners or nothing like that. So uh, you can search for partners online or among your contacts. But if there is a specific question, just let me know. Thank you. No, it was just uh, general questions. Another one related with eligibility of the countries, two similar questions. One is if a Spanish artist can uh, do their uh, residency in the Canary Islands, you already said no, because we're talking about the same country. You need to live in an eligible country and go to another country as a destination. And another similar one says, in the case of a group of two people, one a Spanish citizen and another one an Italian citizen, but both living in Spain, can the destination country be Italy? Yes, in this case, yes, because we need to forget about the nationality here. Only the place, the, the, the legal residence is what counts, okay? About the invitation letter. Does the does it need to include the name of the leader of the project or or just the project name or no all the names of all the members of the group need to be included in the letter that's very important because sometimes we receive um the letter with the name of the artistic group but always to be sure you always need to have all the names of all the members of the group mentioned in the letter okay Thank you. And about the funding, uh, some people are asking about what those amounts cover. I don't know if you want to, or you show the slide with the amounts, because for example, someone is asking if you only cover the trip or if there's any additional amount for the period they're staying or production costs, for example, someone else is asking. If you want to uh, check, we are actually talking about travel expenses. Uh, it doesn't cover everything, all the cost, uh, production, uh, the, no, it's just a maximum uh, amount per uh, concept. You can see the screen here? Yes. So here, no, there's no amount uh, for production costs or project costs because this is a mobility grant okay so it covers travel and the, the daily expenses we have 75 euros per day 
for the days you are implementing the project in the destination country. And then the travel, the travel allowance. If it's under 5,000 kilometers, it's 350 euros. And if it's 5,000 kilometers, it's 700. Then, depending on each applicant's circumstances, we have the additional top-ups. We have the visa top-up, the family top-up, the uh, top-up for overseas countries and territories or outermost regions, uh, Canary Islands, Martinica, like in the case of Alba. We have, you can find the, the list online. Uh, and also the green mobility top up or the accessibility support. These are the amounts, but we don't offer anything for the materials or the production costs. It's true that sometimes, well, in the case of Alba, it was not like that. But for example, if, um, for other applicants, they find a cheaper option and uh, uh, they don't need to give back the money it's a lump sum it means that they can reinvest that money that they didn't use in their project and in this sense we can answer another question that we received about whether you have any compensation uh, amount for the partners but no it's not covered no in this case from cultural most europe no another question in the case of groups uh, the arrival at the destination needs to be the same or you, it needs that the it's the project start date i mean someone can arrive on a different date because of the flight but you begin the project yes in that case yes they all need to be there when the project is going to start the dates you include in the application it's always the project dates. So that's why we say that we give a 15 day flexibility. A person can arrive 10 days uh, before if as long as everybody is there for the beginning of the project. Okay, perfect. And as about the partner organizations, do they need to be registered in the program or only the country? I don't understand the question, but the, the important thing is where the organization is based. I don't know if they are talking. No, it can be an international artist. And so they don't need to be registered anywhere. They just need to sign that invitation letter for them. And that's it. Uh, and then the information that we require in the application form. But they don't need to be registered anywhere. We have more questions about eligibility. They asked also whether why Switzerland is not participating and if they will in the future. What we say is, well, the countries need to, need to be interested in, a, in, in the case of Switzerland. Well, they haven't been interested in these uh, programs and they... But they are also asking, so people are asking whether the requirement for the legal residence of the applicant applies to all the members of the group, for example. And that's yes. For example, if the destination country is France, can there be artists from different countries? And maybe one of them lives in Switzerland. No, as we said, the important thing is the legal residence. So all the members of the group need to reside, to be, to, to be living in a country, in a creative Europe country. And they all need to be traveling to another country. Also the list of participating countries. Apparently, it was not exactly the same one published in the document published by the European Union. You included also that list of the other overseas uh, countries and territories, but the countries is what's important. That's a criterion. But someone is saying that Italy was not in the PDF. I mean, well, yes, all, all the member states 
are not in the list because we already know that they are included. I mean, we're talking about the, the list of countries is additional countries to the member states. And there are two or three questions about projects that are supposed to start after April 30, 2025. Gosh already said that, well, we are planning on renewing this program for 2025-2026, but as for now, we cannot confirm that information. Well, just saying that in this call, uh, projects need to start before April 30, 2025. That would need to be for a future call, but we don't know when they will be opened or so they can participate in future calls. We don't know if there's going to be a gap in between this call. I mean, if there's there's a new one, we don't know if it's going to be covering already May 2025 or, or maybe not. Yes, it needs to be approved and everything. Okay. They are also asking for recommendations about the partner. I don't know what else we can say about these. You really, you really have to begin with your objectives for this project and who can help you with these. It's like for a European cooperation uh, project, there are no partners that are better than others uh, because of uh, country. You need to think about who is the best possible partner for helping you with your project, with your specific project. And there's also a question about whether you can send two different applications for two different projects in the same call. No. One person can only send one application per call. And it couldn't be just like one individual uh, and also one as a group. No, no, that's true. Sometimes we receive uh, group applications where a member of the group has sent one same uh, individual application in the same call. And that goes against the, the group because if you've sent a, an individual application and then you're part of a group in a group application, then none of the applications that are, are eligible. Okay? and also about the distance calculator. They are asking, what is the address that you need to set for the origin? You set uh, the address of each of the participants or a common address? Well, this needs to be done for each of the members of the group. So each member will set his own address. Actually, the form will give you the address that you said at the beginning when you registered GAP. So it's 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 always going to be that same address, uh, your home address. So you need to do that for each member. Okay, yes. A question about a researcher, a scientific researcher. I've been trying to combine science and performing arts with a team of theater professionals. Since the European Union has uh, initiatives for science as well, could this be eligible? I tried to fill in the application form and I didn't see science reflected in any of these. In this case, it's some very specific cases uh, of projects that are there in the limit in the border with uh, uh, audiovisual or science or other sectors that are not uh, eligible, for example, internships for master degree programs. But, well, it's true that I, I always say that the way you write, you draft your application form is very important because if you provide a lot of information about science and not about art, maybe in the eligibility checkup um, without even getting to the expert, it's going to be difficult. But if you clearly focus uh, in the art aspect of the project, if you describe 
that artistic element of the project and you prove that it's an artistic project, uh, well, then uh, you can access this uh, hybrid projects combining different sectors are, are eligible. I mean, they can, they can be eligible. So just to understand myself as well, we have a group of four people, uh, three of them are uh, artists and the fourth member is uh, a, a scientist. They, they could do it, right? As long as the project is framed in one of these sectors. Yes, and in the application form, when you send a group application, they will need you will need to explain what's the role of each person in the group, why this person is important in this project. So you will have to explain that there in that section. And about the documents that the partner associations or organizations or individuals need to send. Well, you show that you, you have that letter, that model. Yes, they just need to to fill in that information and we have it in the in the application process. It's a part where you fill in all the contact information and then the invitation letter. Walter is asking, I don't know, Walter, if you can please tell us either writing it on the, on the chat or maybe just telling us, I would like to know about performing arts, specifically theater, but I don't know. Yes, it's an eligible sector, but I don't know what you want to ask. So you want a specific question? Please uh, tell us. Another question. To access as a cultural manager, not as an artist, What's more important, the project that you're going to work with or the work that the cultural manager is going to perform? I'm not sure I understand the question. No, I understand that it's an individual application. I understand that you assess everything, the activities that you're going to develop in the project and of course the project with its objectives and expected outcome etc right para explicarlo todo el rol y en qué consiste el proyecto entonces no sé la, no es que una cosa sea más importante que la otra um, you have the opportunity to explain everything it's i mean not one thing is more important than the other one you 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 can check on the uh, call document what's the importance that percentage uh, of each uh, part and as Loli was uh, explaining at the beginning you the partner can be an individual it doesn't need to be an organization so that's confirmed And Walter was asking about performing arts. Is asking about experiences in this field. If you can give us some examples, some among the applications. Yes, in the theater sector, well, we have we have so many. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I cannot think of a specific example. The experiences of hypertenus are already available. I can uh, leave you the link on the chat. We have many uh, testimonies already. I don't know if you can tell us about more recent experiences. Yes, I would also um, suggest Walter to check our social media because we share many experiences by our uh, beneficiaries and we share uh, many um, uh, experiences of uh, uh, people who participated. Gosha, I think she may want to add something. Yes. Uh, so just a few examples, but uh, it's, as Loli said, it's difficult because we had 4,500 4, grantees so far, we don't remember all of them. But for theater and in general performing arts, quite often we receive projects when um, an artist goes to a festival. But uh, 
it's not just to showcase the, the creation that already exists, but uh, there are weeks of preparation uh, kind of workshops, and then there is a joint showing or um, there is a mentor in a theater or dance uh, perform performance, and then um, the applicant goes to learn from this person. This is also uh, sometimes. And um, there are also places when there are artists coming from different countries and they go to one place to prepare the play, and then they will go uh, with different uh, actions, diff different supports to show this place, uh, this play in other countries. This, so I would say this is the most often... Uh, application within the performing arts we receive, the most usual ones. But of course, it depends uh, on, on your projects, what you would like to do. And uh, again, be personal, stay within what, what interests you the most, because this we can, we will feed it in the application. And coming back, we will not evaluate artistic part of the project. We will look if at uh, details to see if it makes sense, if it's well prepared, but will not judge of the artistic part of um, of your of of your project. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias. Y tenemos otra pregunta. Thank you very much. And we have another interesting question because maybe we haven't talked about these. If one same partner can have. Uh, Two same art, uh, two different artists for different projects. Yes. Okay. Well, we don't have any other questions. If I think we have a question on the chat. Yes, I was checking now. Is it possible to apply for a residency that is sixty days? The duration is sixty days. I, I no, I'm in that case. No, forty days is the maximum. In this case, we have that margin of fifteen days to travel. So maybe what I would recommend is for that person to use that fifteen days to to go to the destination, maybe they can, the person can arrive 10 days earlier, they're not going to use all the days for the travel and it's a, a fast uh, a trip, but for the project itself, Culture Moves Europe would only contribute for 40 days. The rest would be, uh, the participant would need to pay for, for his expenses. I don't know if maybe I can, add uh, something while I was there I had the opportunity to stay um, working with the association and we started working on a new project and I asked uh, the Goethe Institute uh, how it could affect me and you don't um, lose the total amount you only lose the mobility part of the grant so the funds for staying in the country um, the daily allowance, everything, you don't lose it. You just lose the part of the mobility uh, grant that you were receiving. So maybe you can you can do it. You can do it that way. Thank you. And related to what we were saying before, this is art and science. Well, things related to artistic research linked to university. Can you tell us about any examples or if it's uh, possible? We already said it's possible if the project is framed in this one of these cultural sectors, but I don't know if you want to tell them about any specific examples, Kosha. So the only examples I see is where um, scientists, scientists is a part of the team. Again, the project is uh, created around the one of the sec cultural sectors and quite often we see it in visual arts there is a lot of research on uh, on colors on uh, light uh, with physicians and a lot of uh, new technologies uh, being used so this we see and also in architectural projects um, there are some uh, more scientific uh, inputs from uh, from the applicants from the cultural professionals also on um I don't know uh, how 
deep uh, and how uh, developed is the project the up the um, the participants who asked the question about science um is but uh, there is also in the horizon europe program there are a specific uh, postdoctoral research projects programs mm -hmm. and grants that are very uh, generous for scientific um, research if the project is on arts and culture but this is something that uh, it's completely different from us this is purely for uh, further research and it's done by horizon europe program so you can google this you can find more information on this program and this is also why since there are different european project programs working on uh, education higher education and culture we are not mixing we are just having some areas of interfering we are working together but we are for, for example not uh, supporting projects purely on education uh, within the master's degree or purely on the research when it's in the in the framework of uh, higher research muchas gracias ahora en un momento compartiré thank you very much we're going to share the link for the horizons europe a program and actually two researchers and span and artists from Spain uh, have been awarded uh, within this program so we encourage you to participate there too I think we don't have any other questions let's see if we got any new ones no so that will be it I don't know if Monica wanted to add anything. Yes, if anyone wants to raise their hand and ask their question just on the microphone, you can also do that. A question that we sometimes get also on the phone or by email, and this is for Alba and Anna. Uh, more or less, how long did it take you to prepare the application? It's true that it all depends on how the project is already planned or you have it in your, in your mind be before. But to have an idea, well, in my case, it took me quite a long time, but it was a very wide project with a lot of information. And so I had to understand, also ask other people for the opinion of what was the most important aspect to, to to focus on in the application. And also you need to sum up the information in something brief. So it, it took me weeks, uh, uh, several weeks, uh, and going over it again and again with different people, people who maybe had previous experience, not, not with this program specifically, but uh, for me, it was the first time that I applied for a grant like this. So, so it was long. Yes, I, for me, it was similar because I wanted to, to have the feedback of the association, the feedback from my partner, also friends that I have that had experience in doing this. Also, for me, it was the same time that I, that I was applying for a grant like this. So it was a long process. I think that just with the application, I, I spent a month, I think. Uh, 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 focusing on that because I was like double checking and going over everything and so you try to sum up all the information and also well I'm a uh, freelancer so I work with social media so I had to to create my own portfolio that I didn't have uh, uh, so I I had to to put quite some hours for all that work. Thank you very much. We've just published on the chat the Starts Award uh, link and uh, also the link for information about the beneficiaries in the previous call because before Culture Moves Europe came up, we had iPortunas and you have all the information there about uh, case studies, uh, previous experiences. So, if there are any other questions, anyone wants to raise their hand and 
and ask you will have this video available and also the presentations on our website in just a few days um, as soon as the video of the recording is ready you will have this all and just uh, reminding you that you will have the feedback form uh, now it was uh, we will be very thankful if you can uh, give us your feedback just one last uh, piece of advice alba and anna if you had to give your advice to uh, the applicants what would you tell them in your experience something that you would have liked to know beforehand Well, in my case, I think that my partner and the association supporting me both told me, insisted on reading the questions very well, that um, I should answer the questions being very precise and and also to focus on, on art and culture because what you were saying because it's the same thing for me uh, there i was working more with the social aspect actually of the project uh, that's what the association does they work with uh, women in vulnerable circumstances and so so the project the cultural project or projects are something additional so I needed to focus uh, in the cultural aspect of the project. And Anna, what about you? I would tell them, well, this is probably for afterwards, but uh, document everything. Uh, when I had to do my final report, I realized that I hadn't been taking pictures so I, I had to um, well, just, just take pictures of everything you're doing to illustrate everything you're doing because you're just focusing on the work you're doing and, and then sometimes you forget. So, But you need those documents afterwards. So just do that. Well, thank you very much. I'm sure that all this information is very useful for future applicants. We don't have more questions. So... So we can close. We are going to send you the uh, form, the survey for your feedback. So just uh, wish you all luck if you decide to apply for Culture Moves Europe. Again, I want to thank the panelists here today, the previous participants and Carolina, everybody. And we will see you in future webinars. You can check our website you can follow us on our social media we will continue organizing webinars when we have new calls in any of the funding lines thank you very much and we'll see you very soon